get on our web page, get on our <laughs> channel, and yeah, um, slow again. Web page. Yeah. <laughs> With that web page machine. Yeah. Get get on our get on our DOS drive. <laughs> right. So we're off the mark. This is the world's strongest knot. We've got Clinchot up there feeling a bit lonely, but we're going to get some company along tonight. Improved clinch knot. Let's um, see how that does. We've got two variants in there. Let's hope you've seen our complete overview where we've discussed how the knot varies depending on the tuck. Is it this side? Is it that side? Well, the testing should and will define which variant is better, which variant works better for braid, which variant works better for monofilament, which variant works better for fluorocarbon. So stay tuned and let's hope you uh, enjoy this episode. All right, very brief summary of all our criteria. If you want any more detail, check out our website. We've got loads of information on there, on all our testing, all our parameters. But just to sum it up really quickly, got nine points for you, here we go. Number one, remaining unbiased, no mention of any line manufacturer's names or name dropping. Number two, testing, monofilament, fluorocarbon, and braid. Number three, 10 pound, 30 pound, 50 pound, 80 pound, 100 pound, five different line weights, three different line types. Check that out. Right. Number four, all knots will be compared to our measured line strength. We will not use the stated line strength on the manufacturer's labeling or on the carton or on the coffee tin, whatever it says. We will determine exactly under our conditions what that line's breaking at. Number five, batch control on all line types. If we get in a new batch of lines, we will test those and then use them for not testing. Number six, all our results will come to you in a final percentage, which will be compared to our measured line strength, the actual line strength against the knot strength. And you'll get a percentage to know how good that is. That's kind of how we'll sum it up for you. Number seven, we'll give you exactly how many wraps we use for every line type, for every line. It'll give you a nice, clear, go-to guide on how many wraps for a particular knot. Really helpful. Number eight, we will give you the actual measured line strength. So, we might measure a 10 pound monofilament line. It might be eight pounds, it might be 30 pounds. You will know, which is quite an interesting thing. You buy the stuff and you see it on the tin and you go, oh yeah, it's a 10 pound line, but actually, it's not. It varies, you will see. And number nine, we have tested over 600 knots and line tests for this knot. Now, normally we only do 450 this knot because it's got this forward tuck, reverse tuck, which one's better. We're actually going to tell you exactly which one's better for which line. And it's interesting, it does vary. This may be why you struggle on certain uh, improved clinch knot applications. Anyway, stay tuned, we'll give you the data. So, just to summarize, the same direction tag tuck outperformed on monofilament and fluorocarbon, but it was ineffective on braid, hence we used the reverse tuck. So yes, this is interesting, that just the manipulation of the final tag tuck could in fact determine whether you've had success or not with this knot in the past. Right, tip of the day. When you tighten your knot with braid, you need to ensure you tighten until color change is reached. Basically, as the knot cinches up, it'll reach a point where it binds up and starts to really clamp up under tension. So just remember, braid tightens to color change. If you don't tighten to color change, there may still be enough loose in the knot for a shortened tag to slip through. Oh, and just one more interesting fact before we get onto the results. So with monofilament, Watch what happens to the knot on tension. It extends and opens up a gaping big hole, as we mentioned in the overviews before. It's just crazy how much it stretches open. This is why the clinch struggles and why the improved was born into existence. This is the same direction or clockwise tuck under tension. This is the reverse tuck or anti-clockwise tuck under tension. This also shows how much the reverse tuck struggles with mono and fluorocarbon 
as the line stretches under tension. Okay, let's take a look at the results. This should be the good bit. Hope there's no clangers or big upsets on the latest competition results. Right, let's look at the monofilament results. For the same direction tag tuck, we got the following results. Right, 10 pound monofilament, 13.8 line strength, five wraps in a clockwise tuck, 87.09% knot strength. 30 pound monofilament, we got 42.2 pounds actual line strength, five wraps in a clockwise tuck, and 82.08% average knot strength. For 50 pound monofilament, we got 66.79 pounds actual line strength, five wraps with a clockwise tuck, and 87.65% knot strength. For 80 pound monofilament, just to show you a comparison between the anti-clockwise tuck and the clockwise tuck, 103.53 pounds, four wraps with an anti-clockwise tuck, knot strength of 67.13%. And for the other 80 pound monofilament with the clockwise tuck, also four wraps, 103.53 pounds line strength and 67.53%. So you get in an extra almost a half a percent strength with the um, clockwise tuck. And finally, 100 pound monofilament, 117.96 pounds actual line strength, four wraps with a clockwise tuck, and the knot strength average was 80.49%. Okay, we've seen monofilament. Let's check out the fluorocarbon results. 10 pound fluorocarbon line, 11.41 pounds actual line strength, four wraps with a clockwise tuck, and an average knot strength of 74.71%. For 30 pound fluorocarbon, the actual line strength was 27.59 pounds, four wraps in a clockwise tuck, and knot strength of 79.2% average. For 50 pound fluorocarbon, 42.35 pounds line strength, four wraps with a clockwise tuck, and 74.32% average knot strength. For 80 pound fluorocarbon, 58.68 pounds line strength, three wraps in a clockwise tuck, and 86.96% for the average knot strength. Okay, finally braid. Uh, look at the wraps. It's gonna be like similar theme to the clinch knot. Check it out. Let's have a look. 10 pound braided line, 21.7 pounds line strength, 12 wraps up and down with the reverse tuck, 81.94% average knot strength. 30 pound braided line, 32.16 pounds actual line strength, 12 wraps up and down with the reverse tuck, 84.07% average knot strength. 50 pound braided line, 55.05 pounds average line strength. 10 wraps up and down with the reverse tuck, 73.2% average knot strength. 80 pound braided line, 85.89 pounds, eight wraps up and down with the reverse tuck, 65.53% average knot strength. 100 pound braided line, 93.74 pounds, six wraps up and down with the reverse tuck. 61.76% average knot strength. Well, that's interesting. Also, just on the braid side of things with regards to wraps, we test to breaking points on all knots. So for example, when you tighten a knot by hand on say a 100 pound knot in braid, you may only be testing its strength to 30 or 40 pounds. You'll be surprised how many additional wraps you need on that really slippery braid. I hope you're enjoying the detail. I hope you're enjoying the content. Uh, again, like we reiterated in the clinch knot, the data's for you there to use. It's gonna help you make better decisions on knot selection. Knots, you will already on two knots, we know that. These knots vary. They're better in thicker lines. They're better in thinner lines. They're better in this line. Oh, I need to do a reverse tuck here instead of a forward tuck. There's a lot of detail going on there. I mean, obviously, if it's overwhelming you, <laughs> maybe look at one knot at a time. But the main thing is that you've got somewhere to refer to. Please come back to us. Check out our videos. Keep looking over the data, doing whatever you need to do with it. But stay tuned. Give us a like, subscribe, comments below. Let us know you're enjoying it. Cheers, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Let's look at the results, final results, overall percentages on, on the three line types. Let's see who's on top. Monofilament first. This week we're introducing the decimal point because it sounds better. 
80.97%. Step down, Mr. Clinch now. Right, let's look at fluorocarbon. Interesting result. Improved got 78.8%. Now that's interesting. The clinch nut's still on top. Can you believe it? The simpler than not, maybe it improves the strength. Well, it definitely did on this case. So braid, let's see how close the margins are. 73.3% on braid. I mean, how freaking close is that? Uh, that's like, well, they're almost as good as each other, but we'll put improved on top. It got the better 0.3% or whatever it is. Yeah, whatever it is. <laughs> and uh, we have a new leader. Leader. Quick summary. Did it outperform its predecessor? Now the clinch knot's probably been around for like thousands of years, probably. Who knows? The salmon knot. Well, what a name is that? It outperformed on two categories. Although it didn't trump it on the fluorocarbon. Interesting. This is toy fishing, I'm Warren. That's just forget the kettle on. And don't forget, braid titans with color. And like, subscribe, get on our website. Give us a comment below. Let us know if you like the reverse or the forward or the forward reverse tuck, which one's going on. And don't forget, prompt you about the um, extra. I can talk about the braid topic for a long time. Show you all those graphs. Let us know if you want us to do that video. Take care, and uh, this is Toy. All right, let's go. Hey guys, Warren here from Toy Fishing. Um, get out. <laughs> what the hell? Okay. Hey guys, Warren here from Toy Fishing. Like, subscribe, get on our website, and check out our YouTube channel. We need a few numbers. Please, got it. Get on there and uh, <laughs> give us some. Uh, comments, give us some feedback, and just tell us how we're doing, you know, we're only, we're only new to this and uh, we're just getting started, so thank you very much. Cool. Ah, choose better knots, maybe choose different line types, we're going to give you a lot more uh, info to make decisions, so you've got more fish on the bank and less uh, fish on the uh, That's my favourite one so far. Freaking, more fish on the back, the freaking, more fish on the back, swimming around. <laughs> freaking, what's it? The last thing you want is plenty more fish the in the sea. The FWC are going to be like, what this freaking bike needs to be. Cut down or something. Uh,